In this video we're going to uh, look at replacing this PowerPoint. Um, originally I purchased this, um, installed it, and uh, I used it on a trip to power my GPS. Uh, my GPS had a regular car adapter but it had a standard USB input into it and uh, about an hour into the ride my uh, GPS stopped working it actually turned itself off so I don't know if it had an internal thermal switch or uh, if it uh, just didn't know how to deal with uh, that kind of input with the USB cable I was using I don't really know what but um, what I want to do is uh, switch it over to a standard um, automotive car socket. Uh, pick this up on eBay, and that's it there. And it's a standard car socket. Um, it's pretty straightforward uh, replacement for it. And I figured with this type of device is use one of these. Um, that's, uh, you see these everywhere. Um, if I want to charge a phone or uh, something else, I can just use this uh, in that slot to get my USB power and I don't have to necessarily rely straight on this uh, USB port. And also gives me the versatility of using any other uh, attachment um, for it. Now it's not totally necessary, but I like to remove the shield, and you'll see why um, after it's off. Uh, use a number four Allen screw, or hex head. And it's just six bolts, They're really simple. Don't forget these have little plastic washers on them, so you want to keep track of those. All these bolts are the last one. Let's give it a little tug and uh, off it comes. Now we're going to take off the four bolts. Uh, there's one here, one down here, and two on the opposite side. Once again it's a number four Allen. And they have plastic washers on them as well. Now, this whole assembly should come out. There's a couple of, uh, a couple of tabs that hold this front piece in place. Let's forget how that locks in. There we go.
you can see these have little uh, little locking tabs so they have to be pushed down while they're being pulled out or rotated down that's what I did was I kind of pulled on the bottom and it kind of popped these out of place so they do lock in quite a ways forward so I'll just kind of slide this out of the way so you can see so as you can see the original one let's get a better shot of it here the original one I put in as well as the garage door opener is right there fed it over the bar and down below and you can see there's a quick disconnect right there that's for the garage door opener and uh, the spade connectors I made that harness up to tie into the existing wiring harness way down at the bottom there and we'll point that out to you okay we're going to take this assembly off so one wire these both off oh boy that's on there tough <clears throat> two okay so the power point is off now the only thing left holding it is the garage door opener and we have a tab for that and we'll disconnect that tab there we go. and the unit comes out Here's a better view of what's going on in here. If you look way down, of course this is on the left side of the bike, and you come on in, you'll see those two, let's see if I can hold this here, you'll see these two wires right down here. You got a blue and white and a black and yellow. Now the black and yellow is your ground and your blue and white is your positive 12 volt. So I made this little wiring harness and wrapped it just to give it some uh, some protection and you'll also see this uh, white box which I'll show you in a minute it's just velcroed to the inside that's the, where the garage door opener um, module is I've seen a lot of people ask uh, where the power port power comes from and just beside the battery, tucked up in here, you'll see a pair of wires and a fuse. It's one of these little um, micro fuses, and it's two amp. I believe it's two, not five. Yep, so it's two amp. And it just goes in there, and it's snapped. It says two amp ACC usually stands for accessory and it's just snapped in there so if you ever have to get this out of there you just pull the tab and the whole thing pops out and inside here you got your other fuses for the rest of the bike so that power points giving off two amps at 12 volts so that's 24 watts of power um, it's good enough for most uh, most electronics that you'll be using um, you'll have to uh, if you're going to have two or three or four things, you'll have to look at the wattage of all of them charging at the same time, how many watts that's going to be. Um, due to the thickness of the wire, uh, you may be able to get through a little bit more voltage by changing the, the fuse. Maybe get a 3 amp or a 5 amp. 5 amp might be pushing it. Um, it depends on the uh, type of load. But... Uh, 2 amps should be uh, good enough for most electronics. You could run a, a GPS, a cell phone, and uh, um, maybe another piece of equipment 
uh, on top of that. So what I did for this PowerPoint, uh, the USB PowerPoint, I um, I uh, drilled. I used a, a step drill, three or sorry, it was one inch step drill, and I had to uh, pick a nice central location on there. Drilled it straight through. I made sure that there was a lot of spacing behind it. So there's definitely ample spacing, as you can see, behind it, including the wiring that goes back there, and uh, nothing interfered with it. Drilled the one inch hole and then I used a Dremel with a sanding attachment just to finish it off. Um, once I got it mounted uh, it has a, pen, uh, a possibility of turning so what I ended up doing is I used some uh, black um, silicone, sorry clear silicone just to lock it in place uh, so it doesn't rotate and I'll do the same thing again when I put the new one in. So I'm just going to unthread this piece here, pull the whole thing out, put the new one in, and I uh, got it from, uh, they all seem to be the same size, um, got them off of eBay, and I also have this push button here, which is for the garage door opener, and the thing you have to consider when using such a small button, uh, one thing I did was I made sure that I used a waterproof button, because they're going to be sitting on the outside, and I wanted a black one, so it took me a little while to find a black waterproof one, and this one uh, is. And uh, just drilled a hole, put it through, locked it down with the, uh, the nut that's supplied. But I also wanted to uh, make it so that when I do remove the, the fairing portion or anything that I have to do work on, I had to make sure that I had a connector that was uh, going to allow me to disassemble this because the connections on the back of the switch are solder only, so they're just soldered in place. And um, so uh, that soldered and heat shrunk. And then I got this fitting, which uh, is keyed and will fit inside uh, that connector there. So I can disassemble that at any time. So what I have here so I basically went to the electronic supply store purchased this little project box and you see I put some velcro on the back and I use a little bit of silicone where the cables go in just to keep it watertight didn't want any water getting in there Phillips screws take that out and there's the module so this is out of one of those uh, um, Chamberlain I have uh, Chamberlain garage door opener and this is one of those garage door opener uh, button um, openers that came with the garage door and it's one of those learning style and basically what I did was I unsoldered the button switch. There's a button switch right in the middle and that's what you click. When you're clicking on it there's a little button switch in there. So I unsoldered it and used the wire as uh, heading to the other button and so it holds it all in place, trimmed it up and it just barely fits inside there, which is good enough. And it's uh, uh, I put the Velcro on the bottom also so I can change out this battery uh, whenever I need to change it out. It's a CR2032 3 volt lithium cell. So it should last many years, and it does. Um, it hasn't uh, given me any issues. I've had it for years. So. Uh, I'll just pop this back in here and put it all back together and uh, put it back in the bike. Okay, I managed to get this off fairly easily. Um, 
silicone was uh, holding it in there really good. First, I I had to use uh, slip jaw pliers to just even turn it. Once it turned, the whole thing turned, so I had to actually use um, another set of slip jaws to hold this from rotating, and it was a fight to get the whole thing off. So obviously, this was not going anywhere. Um, here's just a rough idea of where uh, where I drilled the hole. Uh, center point is kind of in the middle of the hole section there. So just to give you an idea when you go to cut yours. Okay, so I have the new power point on. Um, siliconed around the outer edge and ready to put it back in. I have to let you know that on the inside um, it is polarized so the electronics will be looking for that positive and negative pole so the outside is negative and the inside that little spot way at the bottom there that's the positive so when you hook it up you have to make sure that the positive lead goes to the inside most pin and the negative goes to the outer edge there. It says right on it plus and negative and as well the uh, if you are going to use the USB port um, it as well even though it's not to the edge they are marked as positive and negative I'm sorry positive and negative and um, so they do demand that you put them in properly because they uh, they are polarized um, when you when it goes in for the uh, the voltage it needs to see the ground for the uh, the circuitry so we'll put this back in and button her up so I forgot which one is the power port um, I have a funny feeling it's this one, but we will check. Um, I could go down and uh, look and see which one is the black and yellow wire and kind of wiggle my way through it, but uh, I think uh, we'll just use a voltmeter, turn the bike on, select a ground, and just probe this one. That's 12 volts. We'll probe this one. And that's zero. So I was backwards. That one's got the 12, and that one's a ground. So that's good to know. Let's turn that off. And we'll hook up the connector. So I'm trying not to get my hands gooped up. First thing I want to do is reconnect this cable. But first I need to get through the bar. There's a bar that kind of loops in there. So I just wanted to keep it consistent and reattach module for the velcro just like that. there we go now we can reattach it Now, pull these wires down. Okay. So now the outer one was 12 volts. I want that to go to the inner socket. Just jam that on there as best I can. There we go. And then this is the negative. 
and that's on there good okay so we'll just continue to feed these wires through here through that little opening which I'm not sure if you can see that or not the lighting is not very great my apologies and then we'll just get these back in place. Now there's these little tabs here, they kind of lock into a, a slot in there. So you want to make sure that, that they're in place and that that's in place. And I'll just kind of snap into place there. Okay. There we go. So that's all good. Now we can put our four screws back in, put our six screws up here back in to hold the windshield, and then we'll just go underneath and use a zip tie, and uh, I'm just going to reach down through here and through the bottom and just grab the wires that are loose and just kind of zip tie them up, and uh, we're done. I hope you found this uh, video informative and uh, happy writing.